Hello, friends. Welcome to Legends of Be Wealthy in our Scale to Wealth calls. Y'all, I'm Amanda Dahl. I'm hosted in Tampa Bay, Florida, and I am sitting in for our amazing Caitlin Mitchell, who could not be here today. And we've got an awesome guest to interview in conversation today. But before we get started, I just wanted to flip it over to Cinderella very quickly so that she could um, go over any housekeeping items that we have for today. So Cinderella, you want to take it away? Yeah, absolutely. So as you guys know, this is our Thursday Legend Calls. We have a Ryan Manley here today, interviewed by Amanda Dahl. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat box below on Facebook or right here in the Zoom meeting, and we'll get to them towards the end, and we'll open it up for a Q&A where you can just unmute and ask some questions. Otherwise, back to you, Amanda. Love it. All right, so Ryan, tell everybody who you are, and actually before you get into your team and all the amazing things that you do, I want you to open up with this awesome story about how you joined uh, Be Wealthy. Okay, yeah, it's actually a pretty funny story. Thanks for having me, Amanda. You know, excited to be here. Um, been watching, you know, every Thursday and all the other videos, so there's so much value had to be in this group, so appreciate all you guys do for sure. Um, so yeah, so personally, I've been getting coached by Brett for at least it's probably been over three years, maybe three and a half years now. And so I've always been, you know, a lender. And then I had another business on the side that we can go into and uh, have done a lot of different aspects in real estate. But Brett was really coaching me on the, the lender side of things. And I remember that I got this invitation from Caitlin that uh, said like, hey, you should come to this little event. You know, it's gonna be really cool. You know, just a few small people, um, you know, it's gonna be really, you know, uh, informative, all that good stuff. It's two days, you know, just show up. So I'm like, okay. So I show up and it's this, you know, room of probably 10, 15, you know, wholesalers, um, some retail guys. Um, I'm the only lender in there. They're all running these big monster teams. They're all talking about all this crazy stuff that I don't even, I mean, I've sort of heard of, but I don't really even know what's going on. And I'm like, man, am I the slowest person in this room? Cause I'm just trying to like digest all this information. So I was a little timid. I was just kind of watching and I wasn't asking too many questions, you know, and I got through it. I was like, man, that was really cool. You know, I learned a lot, but um, comes out actually whenever we were in Park City that uh, I went and had dinner with Brett and a few other people and they're just laughing and looking at me and I'm like, what? <laughs> What's so funny? He's like, oh man, he's like, you know, I told, you know, Seth and, you know, Caitlin knows only a few other people know this, but like, uh, whenever you showed up that day, you weren't even supposed to be in there. You weren't supposed to be invited to that, to that event. And I was like, what do you, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, I went and grabbed Caitlin. And I'm like, what's the deal? Like, why is Ryan doing here? He's a lender. He's not going to have any idea what they're talking about. He hasn't done the homework. He's just going to be completely lost. And Caitlin's like, oh man, you know, what should I do? Should I make him leave? And uh, they're like, no, we'll just let him stay. And uh, it turns out I was like one of the first ones to get set up in the Be Wealthy group and, you know, like one of the first kind of top 10, 15 in there and, you know, have been in there ever since. So I love it. it was Beautiful all my, mistake. Yes, yeah, I love it was it. all my accident. But that spurred me into where I am now and, you know, the whole sell investing that I'm doing and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, I guess things happen for a reason. Well, tell everyone who you are, where you're at, what your team structure looks like, what you offer, like let everyone really get a taste of, of what you do. Right. So um, starting out, I mean, I grew up in a small town. I've always been really obsessed with selling stuff from selling rocks, you know, out of people's neighborhoods, to yard sales, to flipping, you know, furniture or anything I could get a hold of. So um, I was always really good at that and I was always um, trying to find the right vehicle, you know, to, you know build wealth and, you know, a lifestyle and all that stuff. So um, I, you know, went to school at U of A and uh, I kind of fell into the, the real estate mortgage business back in 2001. So I've kind of been playing in that space for um, a long time. I've done a lot of things in real estate. I've um, originated, I've sold title insurance, I helped start a home warranty company. Um, and now um, I actually own my mor own mortgage business. I have a real estate investment company, wholesale company. And then um, I also um, have a fitness product that we've been running for the last 13 years as well. So um, play in a few different arenas as far as, you know, what's been going. But the mentorship and the coaching that we've been involved in, you know, has helped me really kind of create a lot of other ancillary businesses around my main focus, which is, you know, mortgage now. Yeah. So currently, um, you know, back in what, 2000, 2001, 2002, you know, not 2002, but 
probably 19, 2000, 2001, loans were falling out of the sky because we had, you know, two, three percent interest rates. So, you know, we went from running a, a massive team doing, you know, funding a half billion dollars a year to, um, you know, 2002, the rates go from 2% to 6% and, you know, <laughs> pretty much overnight. So the, the loans falling out of the sky thing stopped, you know, and we kind of had to go back to figuring out what's going to work, what are, you know, how can we survive this environment? You know, the volume's way down or cutting back, you know, a lot of our um, operational people that made us good and had to make a lot of hard decisions just to um, kind of clean up shop and, you know, float by. So um, that really forced me to go through and um, take a hard look at all the businesses I had working I cut expenses and the people. And it also gave me the opportunity since the volume slowed down to go out and start my own mortgage company, which I was able to do in October. So um, it's been a, a building and learning process, you know, going forward on that platform, but it turned out to be one of the, the best things that I ever did. I, I don't think I'd have been able to do it if the volume was where it was, because it would have been too crazy. You know, I was buried in paperwork for a couple of months just trying to get everything set up. So um, as of now, the way that my business looks is um, I've got myself and four loan officers at the mortgage company. Um, three of them help handle my personal production. And then I have one uh, self-gen guy and I'm looking to add more self-gen loan officers as we roll. And then I have a wholesale real estate um, investment business. I have one uh, team lead acquisition guy. And then I have a, a VA that assists in that and some of my other stuff with the mortgage business. And then I have um, a... a, a um, fitness product. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it's called Gallon Gear. Basically, what it does, it holds your water, holds your phone, holds your keys. So it's like a little kind of man purse sort of thing that you could take to the gym. And there's a million different colors. This is like half gallon size. Um, so we got gallons, half gallons, all kinds of different stuff. So um, we operate out of a warehouse in Tempe and we sell all over the country. And we've been doing that for a long time. So kind of just really blending everything I'm passionate about, you know, real estate investing and fitness, you know, it's kind of how I created my world right now. Oh my gosh. I love that. Okay. So for the record, you have to drop the link and where I can order that. Because <laughs> I work out in the gym. I need one of those. Yeah. I no, feel it's like really is a, it really is a game changer. I mean, it was originated by, you know, me and my partner, he was now the, you know, head of my acquisition on my wholesale team, which is pretty interesting, but it started out just, you know, people will carry a gallon of water around. Mm -hmm. and they'll have their phone their keys and everything and they'll just carry their water and they'll throw it in a pile and they carry water and throw it in a pile so we're like hey why can't we just make a sleeve that goes over a gallon of water and holds all of your stuff right so it actually keeps your water cold and then people wanted bpa free jugs and all this other stuff so that's kind of how it's evolved into that but that's incredible i feel like maybe the better question would have been what don't you do <laughs> <laughs> i know i mean you know thankfully brett's kept me out of other great ideas <laughs> greater not so great idea that you know I could have came up with along the way so he's, he's always good at like, that <laughs> yeah he is he's always like you know there's a million ways you can make a hundred thousand dollars a year but you know you, should, you just need to be focusing on the ones that you can make a million dollars a year or more it's just a waste of time you know well and so. I think too you you said something super important in that I have literally built a world around me and I started with the things that I was passionate about mortgages obviously, or money essentially and fitness, which I think is really cool. So, I mean, here's the deal. You're obviously someone who's crushing it at a really high level. That's why you're on this call today. So what would be like the top two or three things that you would attribute the success that you've had in all of your businesses to? Um, I mean, consistency, just staying consistent in my actions all the time. I mean, I'm pretty regimented. I don't like change. You know, I get up every morning early. I read some devotionals and pray. And then I, you know, go to the gym and then I eat, you know, pretty healthy the majority of the time. And then, you know, I, I self-educate all the time, pretty much every single day. I'm either reading, listening to podcasts, YouTube videos, some sort of nugget or edge that I can get on the day, you know, um, just to have something to talk about or just constant thirst thirst for knowledge I think has always been um you know very very helpful and then just always you know honing a trade on you know trying to figure out how to be a better salesperson you know how to um you know just really add value and give to others has always kind of been the way that I get business um I've always been trying to get really involved in everyone's business my realtor partners or anyone I'm involved with as far as 
you know, how can I help you? How can I help you grow your business? Um, you know, how can I help you hold accountable, grow your team, reach your goals? Um, that one book that Brett had us read, um, Dream Manager is pretty, pretty cool, you know? So, you know, kind of always been doing that for other people along the way without really kind of knowing it sort of thing. So yeah, um, that's always helped me quite a bit. So I've heard consistency was one, being knowledge-based was two, and then adding value to anyone around you is three. That's that's what I heard. For those that are taking notes, I want to make sure we highlight this. <laughs> well, and, and taking action. So, um, and, you know, starting to learn to make decisions more quickly has helped a lot too. And adopting social media early, I think, has given me a, a big competitive advantage over a lot of people that are still just trying to figure it out. That's opened a lot of doors for me as well. Yeah. But, you know, just if you point me in the right direction and I know it's going to work and I see somebody else that's doing it, I can, I can go do it myself. I'm hundred percent confident. So I'll just leap, even though I don't really know what I'm doing, you know? So I'll, I am more of the, let's move forward, get a deal and have a problem. And then we'll figure it out along the way versus the get ready to get ready, to get ready, to get ready, to get ready and never take any action kind of person. Yeah. You know, it's interesting that you say that because I feel especially with the right direction. I mean, you obviously said you've been coached by Brett now for like three years. And what I noticed about the people in his world is when he says do something, they go do it. They don't ask a bunch of questions. They don't need a bunch of data. He said, go do it, go do it. And they're not, they don't have this fear of failure. They just go do the thing and they figure it out. And I, I've noticed that about almost every person that I've been, you know, had the pleasure of meeting in his world. They just go do what he says to, and they don't really ask a lot of questions about it. They figure it out along the way. So I think that's- well, I mean, we're, we're lucky to have a leader that is doing what he tells us to do and he's proven that it works and he has a blueprint. You know, all you, all you really gotta do is follow directions and then that's uh, it. ask for help along the way. So he makes it pretty easy. All right, so switching gears a little bit. We talked about your successes. So now tell me about a failure or even an almost failure that actually ended up creating like an awesome path to success for you when you didn't think it would. I mean, I think I look back and I think there's a couple along the way. Um, you know, going through college and school, I never really liked it that much. And I kind of always struggled a little bit in school. I just didn't like what I was learning. I wasn't into it. So I remember a girlfriend at the time, um, his mother knew that I didn't like like college and she was encouraging me to try to apply with the Santa Fe Railroad to take some sort of like <laughs> physical labor railroad job that I went down a path on for a little while and it didn't work out, thankfully, because that would have been, who knows what happened with that. Um, and then in school, I was a MIS major and I was working at IBM at the time in college and I, I started doing sales with them right out of school and then 9-11 happened, so this will kind of date me a little bit, but um, they laid off, you know, the majority of their sales force like right away after we went through all this training, which ended up, you know, leading me into falling into real estate. So at the time, I thought it was a huge failure and it worked out, you know, getting my foot in the door on something that I never imagined I'd be involved in. Yeah, I hear that a lot, actually, in our industry, you know, mortgage professionals, real estate agents, like I hear that a lot, like I was doing something and I was like, well, I guess it just led me to this thing that now I'm in real estate and I've been really successful. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, not so, too many people set out and say, hey, I'm going to be a loan officer or hey, I'm going to be a realtor, you know. <laughs> I say that quite often. I ask that in classes I teach a lot. Like, raise your hand if it was your dream to be a real estate agent. Typically, that's Only not people are case. people that have someone else in the business that they know kind of like, hey, you got to do this, you know, kind of thing. That's it. Everyone thinks you'll be good at real estate, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So talk to me about an investment. I want to know in particular, what is one like of the best investments that you have made to date? Well, I mean, constantly educating in my uh, investing in my education, you know, I pay more now for my education than I did when I was in college, you know, so don't be afraid to spend money um, if you're getting information from the right people. Um, the dollar amount doesn't matter. You'll take away nuggets that can help you recoup, recoup that. But um, like a monetary investment. Um, so, you know, as I mentioned in the real estate business, I was crushing it, you know, in, you know, 19, 20, 21. And I was starting to stockpile a lot of cash, paid off a lot of my debt. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? I'm talking to Brett. And he's like, they put in the stock market. And, you know, what should I do? And I'm just a, you know, loan officer, a branch manager at the time. And he's like, you know, no, don't use that. I'll put any money in the stock market. Are you crazy? 
and he's like here this is what you're gonna do he's like just uh start dropping mailers and then ask people if they want to sell their house like, you know and i'm like what are you sure he's like yeah just do it and i'm like okay so i dropped a mailer and i started getting calls i'm like i don't know what to do calls he's like just you know here's a script just talk to them see if they'll take a cash offer on their house you know so one of the first ones i got was um this guy called me off a postcard he's like uh, i don't want to sell my house but i have a piece of land that i'll you know sell to you and i'm like i don't know how much this land's worth i have no idea any, any of the questions to ask so i was like well what do you want for it and he's like you know make me an offer and it was an acre of land outside in mojave county and it did have septic utilities and um water to the property which is a decent piece of land so I was like i don't know thousand bucks he's like he's like no i need at least two thousand so i'm like i'm like okay that works <laughs> so then i tie up this piece of property i run it through the process i pay for it and then brett i'm like what am i supposed to do this thing now and he's like uh you know i don't know he's like sell it so i was like okay so i threw it up on um facebook marketplace for twenty five thousand dollars with uh, five thousand dollars down and i said i'd carry the um 20k at you know 10 percent interest for 120 months and my facebook was just blowing up non-stop i'm like holy cow this is crazy so um i got a buyer locked up saw that piece of property um got all the money back I had into the deal plus a couple thousand dollars and then a twenty thousand dollar note at ten percent interest for the next 10 years you know so then Brent's like why don't you just do that a thousand times now I'm like okay so that really got me hooked on seller financing and capturing notes and you know really pushing me down a path to start creating passive income so um I love that story so much. And so at full transparency, and I talk about this all the time, I only started my wealth journey last June. And one of the limiting beliefs that I had was that it, when entering into any type of conversation about a potential investment, I, I would always have to give a little bit more for it to be extremely valuable for the other person to want to receive it. Mm -hmm. And time and time again, I've been proven. I mean, Brett was the first one when he talks about, you know, his first investment partner. And he yeah. talks about the guy that literally cash flowed him. And he's like, listen, there could be the right deal for anyone. And I've heard story after story after story, where if you go just do the thing, I promise you someone is out there with an opportunity. So I think that's so awesome. So did you do it a thousand times over? <laughs> well, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Um, that actually spurred, you know, Brett's like, what the heck? He's like, don't mess with land, you know, but then they, they're like, hey, we're going to really take a look at this land stuff. And they've been starting to do that a lot. But no, it has, uh, I've really only started doing that about two years ago. And so now I have like, um, I have nine notes that um, produce me like five grand a month in income. I have about um, $125,000 into that's worth about a half billion dollars now. So uh, I create a, a lot of, and a lot of note portfolio with not a lot of money. So I'm super hooked on those deals. So we're, we're trying to do as many of those as we can. But I mean, it led me into flipping homes and wholesaling and doing all that other stuff. So um, it's the best thing that I've ever done. You know, it really just creates a vehicle to put you in front of and cherry pick the deals that you want and what you don't want. You just wholesale out to you know other people. So it's also a work in progress and we're all still learning every single day, but um, it's up and running and exciting. Well, and to bring this answer full circle, I feel like the first part of this answer was I'm constantly learning. The best investment that I made was in my education and in my learning. And it's yeah. clear that you continue to invest in that, obviously, and it's just come full circle now. So that's awesome. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Brett's, you know, an alien on the stuff he's doing, you know, so it's just like every time we have our little events, you're just like, all right. I know, so I know, I know. It's good. It's good. All right, so I want to throw a fun one in here. So what is one unusual or absurd habit or thing that you just love <laughs> that nobody would expect? Um, I'm kind of like a sick person. So it's like if my world's not on fire in my business life and I, I'm not like under a ton of pressure and um, everything's just going on at the same time, like very much chaos and I feel like I'm not doing enough. So then I'll go start pushing even harder to get myself back in that situation. So I just have a hard time relaxing and chilling and just taking it easy. Like if I do that for more than a few days, I'm just feel like I'm not, I'm not on my mission. I'm not serving my purpose. 
So um, I guess I'm kind of sick in that way where I just constantly want to be uncomfortable and stress, stressed out to the max or I feel like I'm not doing doing enough, you know. Well, and I feel like this is a topic for a lot of high achievers. I mean, it's hard to disconnect. I say constantly, like I'm the horse that will literally run through the desert and fall dead because I forgot to drink water because yeah. I just keep going and going and going. And so for people that can relate to this, I think there's a lot of people out there that can. How would you say you're working on that? Like, it's obviously you just stated that it's difficult for you to disconnect and recharge. How are you doing it? And before you answer that, I'll tell you, Brett's someone I look to at that. Yeah. I know that Brett operates in 90 day spurts. He puts yeah. his head down and he works really hard for 90 days. And then at the end of 90 days, he's got something amazing to look forward to. And it's something that is pulling him in that direction, which is why he's able to work as hard as he is in 90 days. I have not mastered that yet. I'll be yeah. absolutely honest with you, but I'm curious to know how you're working on that. Like, what are you doing to change that? It's just similar to what, Bre I mean, Brett's done it, you know, beautifully with the way that he delegates and the systems and the tools and, you know, the people that's surrounded with him. So he can confidently leave for a couple of weeks and he knows that his world is going to be hundred percent perfectly fine. So, I mean, that's ultimately the goal to attract the right talent that and delegate your processes. So, you know, if you do leave for two weeks, your world's not going to implode, you know? So it's just a, a constant, constant, um, I guess, struggle or progress trying to, you know, make those systems and put those in place. But even if I can't disconnect for two weeks, I'll just take, you know, sometimes if I can just take a few moments to recharge my batteries and, you know, go for a walk or go to the gym or, you know, I really enjoy nature and those type of things. So if I can just get outside or go up to my second home and be there, even if I'm working, I feel like I'm rejuvenating, you know? Yeah. So. I, I don't have a master like Brad does yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> well, in, in my opinion and what I'm working through, um, I feel like for me, the first step is awareness because I will get on this hamster wheel and I'm trying to push so hard that I'm really not getting anywhere. So for me, the first step is just being aware that in those moments I'm spiraling. So I've got to do some type of pattern interrupt. Like you said, go for a walk in nature, step outside, get some vitamin D on my skin or something just so I can get like my mind right to get back into it and then, you know, continue going. So I feel like yeah. for me, it's the first step's awareness. For sure. And I mean, you're saying that too. I mean, a single dad with two daughters. So when I have them, I'm really trying to make it a point to be more present, you know, so um, I don't want them to say, why is dad working all the time or stressed on his phone or those type of things. So I really made that a focus of my attention to be more present when they're around. So yeah, that, that's oh, how, I appreciate that. yeah. how old are they? Uh, four and seven. Oh yeah. So they're little, it's good age though, right? Good, yeah, good age. It's funny. They're a lot of fun. <laughs> All right. So in the last five years, what is a new belief or behavior or maybe habit that you truly feel has improved your life? Um, I think just getting regimented and consistent, kind of like I said before, you know, um, you know, don't deviate from what you know it works. You know, don't be chasing a bunch of shiny objects and just keep your head down and push forward. Um, you know, I've always been super you know believing of you know show up on time show up ready to go wake up every single day ready to go you know i'll always be um early i'm someone that gets anxiety if i think i'm going to be late I, like on this call i was probably 30 minutes early sitting here waiting for you guys you, guys, you know <laughs> so um i just uh i don't know how i got that installed in me but you know wake up put your clothes on be ready to go you never know you know what's going to happen. So, you know, a lot of those people that sleep in and are in their pajamas and working around the house, you know, they're, when someone calls them and wants to meet them for some sort of opportunity, they, they can't, you know? So it's like, um, you know, you always need to be ready to go. And that's why I like to get the gym out of the way early too. If there's some event at night I need to go to, then I don't feel guilty that I didn't, you know, do what I need to do to take care of myself. So. Yeah. The eat the frog. I like that mentality. <laughs> I want to dig, I want to dig there for a minute though, because you said, you know, not getting distracted with other things and staying focused. I truly believe that's another challenge. I mean, it's a challenge for high achievers. I definitely see it in our industry a lot. The next shiny toy, the next thing. So how do you work through canceling out that noise? Do you have a system or a process that you follow? Is there some protocol? Do you have like a hierarchy that you like it, anything that comes into your world that has to meet a certain criteria? Like how do you, how do you drown out the noise? 
How do you stay? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's so many systems and everything. Everyone wants to sell to loan officers and realtors and investors. So I mean, it's really it's really tough because they they all sound so great. It's like, hey, I need all these systems, and all of a sudden you got ten twenty thousand dollars a month in tools you're paying for that you're you're not using. You know, so I think it's just constantly evaluating the systems that you have new ones do come along that are better, you know? So I guess it's kind of just taking a risk and trial and error and then surrounding yourself with people that are doing the same thing that you are, that you can bounce ideas off of to say, hey, like, have you tried any of these tools or any of these worth it or any of these working? And then just getting feedback from, you know, your partners and people that you're offering that stuff to, if it's a, a value add to them or not, and then just making decisions accordingly. And then when stuff does tighten up, you got to go through your hierarchy and say, all right, what's the most important thing to my business and to, my team and to my referral partners and what, what stuff can we get rid of and still survive? Yeah. And, you know, I say this constantly to people that are in my world. I'm like, listen, I don't like, I understand that the things that are dollar productive and the things that actually generate business are not always the fun things. I get that for most people. And it can seem very repetitive. It can seem boring. You know, Gary Keller says this all the time. He's like, success is boring. And it truly is. You got to find the fun in the other things yet. I'm very, I'm very cautious when I say this because I, I don't want to, I don't want to set anyone off, but I truly feel like until you've earned the right to do the other things by doing the things that actually produce, that actually bring business, the lead generation, the lead follow-up, the appointments to all of that, you haven't earned the right to do the other things in your business. So I think you leave space for that, but you can only earn that right after you've done the things that you absolutely have to. So like, talk to me about what does a structure of your day look like? Like lead generation, do you do lead follow-up, like the important activities first? Like walk me through a day in the life of Ryan. Yeah, everybody wants to jump jump to the front of the line without understanding how to do all the tough stuff, you know? So um, I get up usually around six o'clock. I'll um, read some devotionals and, you know, prayer and meditate a little bit. And then I'll be off to the gym, you know, probably 6.15, 6.30. I'll work out for about an hour. And during that time, I'm um, listening to podcasts, audible books, YouTube videos, self-educating. I take that time to really um, get my head right and then start writing down all my to-do lists and everything I need to get done for the day. And then I'm usually up and out. I'm working around, you know, eight o'clock. I start responding to all my emails and everything that I have for the day that are most important. And then I try to um, use a, a little book that um, Annie Priscilla has. Essentially, it's, you know, how to win your day every single day. So you write down the top, you know, five uh, biggest things help move your rocks or money making activities that you know you need to get done that day. So then I'll I'll run through and get that checklist. And a lot of times I'll have that checklist in my head at the gym. So I'll just write it down and then just be like, all right, these five things I need to get done for the day. And if I get these five things done, I consider my day a win. You know, and if I don't get them done, it's a loss. So basically, there's a W and an L that you have to circle every single day. And you don't want to circle the, the L's, you know, it doesn't make you feel good about your day, you know, so you really focus on the top five things that are the biggest, you know, money generating activities that you can be doing for the day. And then after that, everything just is kind of gravy, you know, so I mean, prospecting, following up with my team, you know, have free business that we're running now. So that creates a lot of minutia as far as other things that need to be done constantly. Um, but I, I really try to make sure I allot enough time every single day to be pushing forward, prospecting, lead generating, and then, you know, ultimately trying to keep my teams busy. I love it. I love it. I love it. And you hear that from the successful people. They get their head right. They get their body right. They get their spirit right, typically first thing in the morning. And yeah. that sets the tone for the rest of their day. And I think that's super important. That's something I used to take for granted. I'm like, yeah. oh, I don't need to do that. Oh, I don't, I'm, I'm just going to get up and go. And eventually it takes a toll on you. So yeah. I can appreciate that. Even if it's five, 10 minutes of reading and prayer, or whatever it is, like that helps give you clarity and you ask for direction and, you know, stuff just kind of comes to you throughout the day. Now I'm curious to know, I'm just, I love everything that you're saying. I'm curious to know, how do you then like trickle this down to your people? Do you have these same conversations with them? Like make sure you're recharging, you know, helping them understand how they win their day first and foremost. Like what do those conversations look like with team members? Similar stuff, you know, I just share with them, you know, if I'm listening to good podcasts or YouTube videos or whatever it is in the morning, I make sure I'm always sending it out and sharing it with my team. And I think that, you know, gives them an edge up and then just having 
conversations with them, you know, trying to, you know, figure out what are their personal goals and what are their business goals and reminding them if they're having a bad day, like, hey, this is, you said what you wanted to do, you know, how can I, you know, you got to keep pushing through this day, tomorrow's another day, you know, kind of thing and um, stay on your purpose and then, you know, you'll get through it and get, get to meeting those goals, but just kind of counseling encouragement, you know, just try to live by example on what you're doing and then um, hopefully you attract the people that will follow. I love it. All right, I got another question for you. So what sure. advice would you give to a smart or driven new agent or investor about to enter into the real world? Um, like really be careful who you listen to and are taking advice from because there's so many jack of all trades out there, or people that are giving advice, you know, on social media or wherever that don't do any business or they're just trying to sell you something, you know? So really be careful who you surround yourself with. I would definitely reach out and search out some sort of mentor or some sort of person that is, you know, actually doing business and the kind of volume that you want. So, you know, try to leech onto them and see if you can join their team or, um, you know, most of them are going to give away all their knowledge or time for free. So you're, you're probably going to likely need to be under them for a while to learn the business and, you know, self-educate. Um, you know, you don't need all these shiny objects that everyone thinks that you need to get started. You know, you don't need the fancy business cards and the fancy websites and, you know, tons of money. Really, all you need is, you know, a phone and some data and the ability to walk and knock on doors and ask people for business. It's really boils down to being that basic. So it's like, worry about all that stuff later as you start getting some income coming in, but really you need to get a deal first or it doesn't even matter, you know? So if you get attached to the right group of people that can help you once you get the deal, all you really got to do is go focus on trying to get that deal or the first deal or the second deal. And then they'll help you get through the rest of it. And that's the only way you're going to learn. Trying to do it all on yourself is very difficult. I mean, you can self-educate, but I'd highly recommend joining a team in the beginning or for the first few years until you get an understanding of what, you know, the business is like and what needs to be done to make it happen. Yeah. Go find the person who's doing what you want to do. Yeah. So you said something that excites me because I've been in real estate since 2015. So just over eight years now. Mm -hmm. And I grew up on calling and door knocking and belly to belly, getting face to face with people. What would you say to the individuals who are now arguing that that or those tactics are becoming less and less relevant in today's industry. I say keep saying it and please tell everyone else to keep doing that because it works really well for us. So the less people calling them, the less people sending out mail, the less people door knocking, better for me. You know, go spend all your money on, you know, leads or whatever you're trying to get. Or, I mean, you can get business on social media too, but um, the old school, you know, call nights, which we do, we're doing every Tuesday night now. Um, you know, mailers, all that stuff, I mean, works really well. If you can be the worst salesman in the world, but if you're taking the right action, you're going to stumble into some business. So so I, I firmly believe that. So get a deal and then we'll figure out the problems later that come along with that. No, I love that. So go tell all your friends it doesn't yeah, work. Tell your friends that stuff more, doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> that was more business for Ryan. I love it. Yeah. Okay. So on the flip side of that question, what advice would you tell those newer, smarter people ready to enter the world to ignore? Um, you know, there's, like I said, there's a lot of naysayers out there that act like they know everything and they don't do any business, you know? So, um, you don't need every tool and system. You know, if someone tells you something doesn't work again, I'd Ask the question that Brett always says, you know, is that the real truth or is that your truth? Like, you know, I meet with agents all day long. There's like, I'm not making calls. I'm not doing this. That doesn't work. You know, they try to make up every excuse to um, not do something. They literally just talk themselves out of it before they even try it, you know? So it's like, there's not a lot you can do for people that aren't willing to help themselves. It really goes back to who are you listening to? Are they doing business or not? And are you taking the right actions, you know? And are you accountable for what you're doing? And, you know, what's your business plan and how are you executing it? So, yeah, it, it's, it's people really overcomplicate the business. Like if you went door knocked all day long, I guarantee you have more listing opportunities than you, you ever could imagine. Yeah. But people just don't want to do it. 
I agree. I totally agree. And I, what I would probably add to that is just make sure you're asking more than one person. Right. Because if you get the collect, like if you get the average sum of the answers, I'm sure you're going to find more ways that the thing can work. Because here's the deal. When you get an idea in your head, you go searching for evidence to validate that idea. So it's better that you ask more people so that you can get the average of the sum of what their answers are. And more times than not, you will find ways to prevail or you will find ways to make it work than to shut it down. It's just the yeah. truth. Yeah. Then I mean, agents are always like, oh, I'm going to wait for the market to come back or I'm going to wait till the rates drop. I'm going to wait. Like, what do you mean? This is where we're at yesterday. You got to pretend like it didn't happen. You know, this is where we're at now. And how do you adjust and, you know, take advantage of the market that we're in? It's all, all you can really do. Well, and you can appreciate this too. It's like when people say to me, like, oh, I'm going to start my diet on Monday. I'm like, but today's yeah. Thursday. Why don't we start today? It's like, exactly. why, why do we waste four days? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I love it. Okay. So talk to me about the books that you're reading. So what is a book or maybe even a podcast recommendation that you would have for our audience? Um, one book that I really liked that I read last year was The Power of One More um, by Ed Milet. I, I feel like I'm reading that, it right now. That book is so good. Like I just zoom through that thing. And like, I'm usually more of an audi audible person just because it takes me a while to get through a book, but I blew through that thing. Um, I feel like that can help every single aspect of your life you, if you just take that one little thing away from that book you know one more push-up in the gym one more minute on the treadmill one more phone call you know prospecting one more i love you to your spouse or your children like if you took that advice like throughout your entire day i think it'd be a game changer so i mean i absolutely love that book um I really liked um, the Almanac of Naval Rabiant that we're reading right now. That book is really good. Um, that was one of my more favorite ones. Lifestyle Investor was really good. Banker's Code was really good. Um, I think one book that really set me off originally was the 10X Rule. Yeah. Um, that one, I feel like, kind of turned my mindset around into like, hey, you know, I don't have to be the best at everything, but I know that I can out hustle everyone and I'll be successful. So I've kind of always taken that mentality. And that's another funny thing. That's before I even knew, I knew of Brett, but this was probably 10, 15 years ago. He was at some event and they asked him what his favorite book was. And he said 10X rule at the time, you know? So I was like, oh man, I hate this book. And so I did. And that, I mean, that really had a, a huge effect on me. And I pretty much make everyone around me, you know, start with that book if they're not self-educating themselves. So I love that one. Um, podcast. Podcasts, yeah. Yeah, podcasts. I love um, Ed Milet. I love Real Bradley. Um, I listen to um, like the Bigger Pockets, Ryan Pina, like a lot of those investor guy podcasts are all really good. Yeah. Andy Cristela, um, he's interesting. So, I mean, those type of people I'm always listening to. Uh, have you done the 75 hard challenge? No, um, I haven't done that. So it's kind of been on my list of things to do, but I, I live pretty strict in my life as it is, you know? So it's like, um, I usually eat clean majority of the week and, you know, all that stuff. So but that's probably just me making excuses. <laughs> no, listen, I'm on attempt number four. I've gotten to 14 days. So collectively, I will eventually get 75. I know I will. Um, but I asked that question because Brett actually came up with a 75 hard wealth edition. Yeah. Yeah, and I so I literally, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm recording all of this. I built a tracker around it. Um, and I thought it was really cool that he did that. So I was just curious if you had ever, if you had ever done that challenge. No, it's cool. It's hardcore. I respect everyone that who, who does it. There's a lot of people that say they did it, but they didn't really do it, you know? So. Yep. 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 It's it, no one thing on that list is hard. It's like, I, you know, what was crushing me was the second workout having to be outside. I was waiting to do it at the end of the day and I just, everything would get in the way. And I'm like, it's the stupid workout that keeps messing me up. But I, I mean, no one thing is hard. It's the whole thing collectively that you just have to give priority to. It's just the truth. Yeah, you're drinking your gallon a day. We got, we got you covered here. I know. I can't wait. You got to make sure you drop the link. Okay, so here's another fun one. So what purchase of $100 or less has most positively impacted your life in the last year or so? I mean, probably last few years, but I think the 10 BII calculator um, has helped me make a lot of money. And that was only five, I think $5. 
So you are I'm, Brett's coaching client. <laughs> <laughs> I, I put together a lot of deals off that calculator and that's kind of how you live by if a deal makes sense or not and exactly what numbers you need to be at. So I absolutely love that. Um, I think Audible is another good expense under a hundred dollars. You have access to, you know, any book you could, you know, pretty much get your hands on. And if you are a slower reader, such as myself, then you're able to digest, you know, a lot of books. So, I mean, they say the average CEO reads 60 books a year. And for me to anywhere get close to that I need to be digesting books on audible that you can listen to it you know one and a half times speed or whatever the case may be in your car or the gym whatever the case so I definitely love that and then I you know third one I think is like even a five dollar cup of coffee that you can spend to get in front of somebody that you know you can gain some mentorship or some knowledge from is you know the best you know money that you can possibly spend yeah, you know, I, I was actually thinking about this one for me and I was like, what? Like personally, I think it's my watch. So I actually have this cup. I can't find it for the life of me today, but I have this cup with a straw and it. it's 40 ounces. And like, it's I drink 120 ounces every day just by buying this cup because it's yeah. easier for me to drink water out of a straw. Professionally, I don't know. That one's hard for me. In the last year, probably bomb bomb because I'm able to get emails, like my face in video out emails and it's created a lot of people uh, connecting and responding to me, but I had to think about that one too. So good deal. I like your answers. All right. I'm going to leave you with this final question. And then I would like to open it up to anyone who is, um, on the zoom call to ask any questions or give any feedback on what you shared with them today. So my last question for you is if you had a gigantic billboard anywhere, like metaphorically or for real, and you wanted to get one message across to a million people, what would that billboard say? This is actually a funny one because we're in the process of doing it. But um, so I created this. I created this saying that I put on bandit signs, and it's helping me start to buy a lot of houses. And people told me I was stupid for doing it, but it's working. So it's stop crying, call Ryan. You'll buy your house cash. So I'm actually working on starting to put that up on some billboards right now. So I'd absolutely like to get that all over the country. Stop crying, call Ryan. He will buy your home for cash. I love yeah. it. <laughs> when you see it once, you're going to remember it, right? So stop crying, call Ryan. That's good. <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right. Well, Ryan, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you being here. I'm going to open it up. So my friends who are on the call, you have any questions? You got Ryan here. He's been absolutely amazing. I would love for him to answer anything that you want to ask him or share with him. I don't know. You covered a lot. They may not have any questions. Answer it all possibly. Going once, going twice. Uh, what has been your worst deal? Great question from CJ. Worst deal. Uh, I mean, probably doing business with somebody that you know that you shouldn't be doing business with just to uh, earn the commission. I mean, not to mention names, but there's been some realtors that we worked with in the past. They're just total nightmares that you feel like you're selling yourself to the devil by doing a deal with them. And it just completely blows up in your face and, you know, and it, it just ends badly or helping a client, you know, I had one client that um, was doing a favor for someone by, you know, essentially doing the loan the guy was, you know, verbally abusing my whole team, myself, title partners, everybody along the whole way. I told, I should have just told him to, you know, kick rocks. And I knew in my gut, I'm like, we're bending over backwards. The guy, we gave him a killer rate. We're, you know, closing early. Like there's nothing else we could do for this. And he sucked up the, the amount of energy that um, would have took to do like 15 loans on one deal. And I'm like, watch this guy's just going to blow us up on the internet for some reason. He talk crap about me all over online and everything else and I'm just like I knew I should have fired this guy from the beginning but I did so <laughs> I'd have to say that guy for sure so trust your gut is what I'm hearing trust your well, gut, yeah I should have clarified Ryan did you mean like a mortgage deal or did you mean like an investment deal <laughs> so I yeah. just want to make sure we get it what about investment deal worst investment deal you've ever done worst investment deal um well, I guess recently dumping a bunch of cash in the stock market that I shouldn't have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that didn't end up working out too well. So I should have just left it in the sidelines, you know? So, I mean, really, like Brad always says, he's like, I don't take risk on anything. It's like putting money in the stock market is just like playing the slot machine. So it's like, 
you want to go play play a roulette and do red and black cool that's if, if you like that go do that with your money you know yeah. but if you want he's like you know this business he's like you know lending you know all this other stuff why don't you just double down on what you know and you can calculate the risk on yeah. so that was that was a big eye opener for me and um i'm not i have no plans of investing in the stock market again yeah. <laughs> well and back to your first answer like you kind of nailed it. This it, bringing this whole interview for a circle. You said in the beginning, like doing those things, like doubling down and doing those things, allows you the choice for what deals you want to do in the future. Now you don't feel like you have to do any one deal. You get to pick and choose the deals that you want to do, both in your business and investing, which I think is really cool. Yeah, create a vehicle that you can take the cash that you're generating and you know invest in things that you know you can't really lose on or very small risk is what it's all about now. Yeah. CJ, thank you for the question. That was so awesome. Anyone else have a question for Ryan before we uh, let him go? You can put it in the chat. You can unmute. Give him a minute. I'll put the link to our jug company in there. Please. Well, also share how people can get in touch with you. So how do people yeah. reach you if they want to chat with you or know more about yeah, what you Yeah, you can always call me, text me, 480-203-6263. Um, Follow me on social media at Ryan Manley, R-Y-A-N-M-A-N-D-L-E-Y -E on Instagram or Facebook. I'll always respond. So reach out. Any questions, happy to help uh, anybody out there. I love it. Well, you have been absolutely incredible. Thank you for the time today and your transparency. I love it. And we'll see you at the next mastermind. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Bye, guys.